Hello and welcome to today's SAP Community Call. I'm Svea Becker and um, I'm part of the SAP Community Team and I'm really happy to have here a great team on board presents the updates about what's new in SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0. We have Peter Engel who will start the presentation. He's solution owner for SAP Intelligent RPA. Um, afterwards, we have Sophia Mahersi. She is a product specialist in the same team. Then we have Jerome Grandin. He is specialist customer solution adoption. Um, following Jerome is Xiaoui. Um, she is software development manager. And the last speaker is Mayara Elwanger. And she is also part of the SAP Intelligent RPA solution management team. So thanks everyone joining this call today. I hand over to Peter and I will remove my video because as I said, I have a little issue with my internet connection today. So I hope um, everyone can join and proceed joining the call. Have fun and I hand over to Peter. Yeah, thank you very much, Svea. <clears throat> yeah, my name is Peter Engel. I'm just, as Svea said, I'm the solution owner for Intelligent Robotics Process Automation. And I want to tell you something in general about IRPA 2.0. And uh, then later on, we go into more details. Sophia, can you go to the next slides? So what is SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0? It is an updated product version. It's not a new product. Yeah? So that is the... Uh, evolution of our existing product and it's designed for specific target groups. So as we will show it later uh, that we not only uh, targeting in the moment, uh, targeting anymore the uh, specialist developers if uh, really with really deep with really deep knowledge of uh, developments and so on and we now also targeting then all the um, the uh, citizen developers and also the business people to build their own bots. It offers a simple to use bot building, uh, it offers simple to use bot building cap capabilities and follows the low code, no code approach. This means that we really make it easier to build bots with a graphical uh, user interface where you can build the bot flows with drag and drop and can really, you can really do the most things without any coding. Yeah, that's, but also we uh, have still uh, the possibility to code yeah, and to develop something and so that we don't uh, leave our uh, specialist uh, or development specialist behind. And it creates the path to hyper automation. This means we integrate more machine learning, artificial intelligence and uh, document management and so on. And we deliver the possibility that everybody can build an automation. Next slide, please. So as you know, our SAP Intelligent Robotics Process uh, auto Automation Solution uh, has three components. Our solution is designed with a studio. We had the desktop studio, and now we got the uh, cloud studio, which is then the, more, yeah, the biggest part of the new SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0 functionality. We run our tool with agents. It's still an uh, on-premise component, which will be installed on your desktop, on your machines, where we run the agents. And we have the cloud factory, where also then uh, technically the uh, cloud studio is integrated to orchestrate and monitor the bots. Having said that, um, who will build bots. As I mentioned, all, not only the expert developers, also the citizen developers and the business process experts can now build bots. Yeah? This mean, and also we enhance the cooperation between this uh, group so that it's easier to work together. And so that, uh, for example, a business uh, process expert or a citizen developer can start building the bot and the expert developer adds some functionality where coding is needed. Yeah? What we do with an RPA tool is the same as before. We build bots to augment and automate human tasks. It's independently from a line of business or industries. We provide this RPA functionality for every LOB and industry. And why, of course, why do you want to do this? Yeah, you want to do save time, costs, and reduce human errors. 
in the business operations, which means that you yeah, enable your, <coughs> your employees that uh, they can do yeah, more productive tasks with, with higher values and that you reduce the tedious task where they have only to copy data from A to B. Next slide, please. Our solution in overview, again, we have the uh, three parts on the left side, the, stu the desktop studio, which is still available yeah, also for the next years. We have the cloud factory, including the cloud studio, which is the really new part. We have our desktop agents, which will be installed on servers and desktops. And we have our bot store for the pre-packet content. This means we deliver not only the tool, we deliver also, and that is important content to our customers where they can directly use pre-built uh, pre bots and can uh, start immediately uh, with, and get a fast, has the fastest way to uh, uh, value. This uh, bot store is also located in the cloud yeah, so that we have now with the uh, cloud studio, cloud factory, the bot store, most, so most of the components in the cloud, only the desktop agent is still running on premise because you also have the, uh, the need that the desktop agent can access uh, special uh, software, which is only installed on your on-prem environment. The cloud uh, part is uh, fully developed on SAP cloud platform and then is also integrated to other SAP cloud platform tools like AI business services or SAP cloud platform workflow. Of course, we still integrate with SAP applications. We interact through these applications via UIs and APIs. You know, that means that we, uh, wherever it's possible, we integrate, uh, for especially in our predefined content via APIs. And then we use also UIs where it is not possible to uh, use an API. But of course, we can also interact with non-SAP applications that could be third-party tools, web applications, Windows applications, internet portals, you know, everything what is normally needed in a business process. Next slide. So the different target groups we want to, uh, we want to uh, targeting here with our new solution have different skills and needs. Huh? It's an expert bot developer is a need a pro code environment and need absolute flexibility. Perhaps a business process expert don't want to use code uh, and uh, he really want to have simplicity of apps and they really want to have an easy to use uh, environment with a good user experience to get fast and reliable uh, um, results. And in between we find the bot operator and the citizen developer and our way is to go from the left side to the right side without leaving the uh, personas on the left side behind us. Yeah, so that's in the end, we will have a tool where a um, business process expert or a citizen developer can build bots, but also which is uh, a good tool to an expert bot developer who starts with um, drag and drop uh, build, bot building and then we are needed at some uh, code to finalize the bot. Next slide, please. How is SAP Intelligent RPA different? On the one hand, we, we uh, start the path, uh, the, our, our way to hyper automation. Now we have a native integration with SAP Intelligent Business Process Management, especially with um, Cloud Platform Workflow. We have an integration with SAP Conversation AI, which means we deliver a predefined interface where you can exchange data between Conversation AI and robotics process automation. We have dedicated connectors to SAP uh, UI5, uh, or Yori, and uh, also to SAP GUI. That means it is our yeah, um, advantage that we have the best possible uh, integration to SAP technology. The developer experience, what I mentioned, it's an easy to use bot studio design time where we really combine the no code experience of, uh, to build uh, simple use cases with the possibilities to add code and therefore to build also complex bots. We have a state of the art debugger and also our uh, documentation and our developer community are really supporting the developer experience. 
we have a lot of ready to use offerings. For example, our bot templates for S4HANA and ECC. We start now with uh, some uh, bot development also for um, success vectors and Arriba so that we will got um, complete, uh, uh, a complete portfolio for all our LOBs that we have uh, redefined bot templates to have a fast start implementing SAP, uh, SAP internal robotics process automation. And of course, we have a growing partner ecosystem and offerings. Uh, you'll see in our community that we have a lot of uh, developers who really contribute to the community every day and uh, it's still growing. Of course, we can build, it, or you can uh, build an attended and unattended bots with our tool, so there's no, no difference in the technology. And we combine both modes uh, with on, uh, one technology and you can really uh, easily build both kinds of bots. And what will come now in the near future, we bundle also our offerings with our SAP core portfolio and products so that you get also from a license perspective and fast start, um, fast start with SAP internal RPA plus for example, S4HANA public cloud and more will to come there. Next slide. So, and with this, uh, I hand over to Sophia so that she can explain more the details in the new functionalities of 2.0. Thanks, Peter. So hello, everyone. I'm glad you could join this call. Uh, my name is Sophia Maharsi. I am a product manager at SAP Intelligent RPA, and I am honored to be here today to present our new um, SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0 version. So during the last few months, uh, we listened to your feedbacks, to requests, uh, to provide you with a complete and functional product that is easy to use, but also enables you to automate complex business scenarios um, and, and so much more, as you'll soon discover. So you'll benefit from our improved Cloud Studio with a brand new web-based authoring experience. Uh, whether you want to capture screens in different applications and assemble them in end-to-end -end workflows, also design complex automations using visual programming and low-code, and then test your scenarios before deploying them uh, onto your environments. And finally, also use our new cloud SDKs um, inside your projects. So certainly um, your existing projects created with Desktop Studio will still be available to create and to use. Uh, however, using our new Cloud Studio to build your projects will leverage our new scripting engine that supports functionalities uh, from Node.js. The desktop agent, however, uh, will remain the same for both engines, apart from some uh, user experience improvements that we've done. All right, let's dive in. Um, so you'll notice how easy it has now become to capture applications inside your project using our new wizard-like interface that will display all the applications that are running on your machine and filter it by technology. You can then declare elements uh, in the captured screens and interact with later um, in your automation. And we will automatically uh, suggest criteria for a, a quick and accurate identification of the declared elements. However, you can feel free to add or remove uh, criteria or, or also uh, specify them more using operators such as starts with, equals to, contains, and, and so on. Finally, you can also use uh, rich automation criteria when you're declaring your elements. For example, when you want to capture tables or multiple instances of an element inside a screen. Uh, also to make sure that an element exists in order to validate the screen. And uh, finally, also to add parents to your element criteria identification as this will make uh, your application more malleable. Uh, in addition, you can also now capture frames of a web application when they are available in the screen you, you wish to capture. Uh, we also support multi-capture, meaning that each capture represents a variation of the same screen. And this feature will bring many advantages, uh, including 
majorly having less screens to manage as you don't have to capture screens multiple times uh, if they already have some similar elements in the context. Uh, also, this will bring more possibilities um, when you're declaring your elements in the screen as the uh, Cloud Studio will automatically link all the elements that are present in the multi-captures. And then when you're designing your um, automation, you can easily uh, choose among the multi-captures of a screen that you want to use in the automation. Uh, finally, as mentioned earlier, you can capture multi-dimensional elements by setting them as what we call a collection. Um, when the declared, um, this, is, this is useful when the declared element um, contains multiple instances inside the same screen. And then you can uh, use loops to iterate through the list of all the instances inside your automations. Uh, additionally, when you're designing your automation, um, you will see how effortless it is to use our new business user interface that supports visual programming capabilities. So you can use activities and controls that are powered by our SDK packages to create complex steps in our business workflows. You can also easily parametrize input variables uh, of activities and then use the expression editor to define um, activities inputs as complex formulas using a JavaScript-like syntax operators, but also functions that are uh, filtered according to the variables type. And note that this code editor here uh, provides benefits such as auto-completion, but also syntax validation to help you quickly and easily assign your variables while you're designing your automation. You can also assemble your captured applications to build end-to-end -end automations. So here you can um, use activities to extract data or uh, perform other actions on elements that you declared in your screen. For example, set a text field, click on a button and many more. This can also be done on uh, desktop applications by directly using our dedicated SDKs activities on uh, Excel, PDF files, and other applications. For example, um, let's say you're build building an automation using Excel and you can uh, use activities to retrieve data from an existing sheet, uh, bind it to a defined data type in your automation, do some data modifications, for example, and then set the new values on your Excel sheet. And this is done all easily using our activities. Uh, finally, as mentioned before, by providing you hundreds of activities uh, inside our SDK packages, you can create complex workflows without having to code. However, of course, uh, we've still added a custom script activity for those of you who feel more comfortable coding your automations. And here also syntax validation as well as auto-completion are also included um, to help you save time. All right, now on to defining your data. So when you're creating your Cloud Studio projects, um, you can easily configure your data structure, whether you will be using primitive data types or complex data types, such as uh, data types nested inside other data types as fields or lists and so on. Uh, additionally, data types can also be uh, predefined in other packages, such as the uh, SDK core or Excel, Outlook, and, and so on. And now you can reference a data type coming from these SDK packages instead of having to redesign and redefine the whole structure all from scratch. We also enable you to leverage your environment variables inside your Cloud Studio project to enhance modularity and sharing capabilities. All right, now, once you've created your applications and uh, automations, you will most probably want to test them um, in order to make sure that they are fully functional before deploying them onto your environments. So first, you can debug applications using the application tester tool to check that the captured uh, screens and elements 
are correctly identified and also perform uh, many more actions on the screen elements you captured to simulate your automations. And on the other side, you can also test automations by um, adding breakpoints on specific steps of the workflow to pause the debug session and um, examine the execution. Uh, we've also added here a timeline which will visually display what has been executed during the session. So meaning um, during the debug session, which automation, which activity was executed and um, other very useful information. And all of this will help you perform deep introspection. So while the console is on test mode, uh, you can do useful things like studying the value of different variables at a specific point of the workflow. This will allow you to uh, understand why a problem is occurring. Then once you're done debugging, you can switch the console back to design mode and uh, update some steps of your automation if that is needed. Finally, you can also test data as input parameters of your automation with the variable editor that will pop up when you're debugging your automation. So here, these values you assign can be of primitive type, uh, a text, a number, for example, but also complex data types, all depending on um, the input parameters you set while designing your automation. In any case, you'll have a more visual editor to better understand the structure of your variables. So here we've added validation to indicate required fields to bind, also a contextual help by displaying sample values. And if you don't want to um, set your variables with the uh, visual editor, you can still use the JSON editor to fill the values using code um, if that's more convenient for you. All right, so uh, last, we will talk about the new connectors and SDKs. So our product support supports a wide range of application connectors that will enable you to create cross applications task automations. Um, therefore, you can build bots automating processes on SAP applications, but also third party applications and uh, Microsoft Office applications, as well as PDFs. Now, the, the new cloud SDKs uh, are available in our store. Uh, they have been redeveloped in a more modular way and decoupled from the agent for your convenience. Uh, note that activities of an SDK uh, package are filtered according to the agent version that you are using while you're designing your automation. And uh, finally, rest assured, uh, the init initial desktop SDKs uh, are still available in the agent to run your desktop studio projects. All right, uh, finally, the SDK documentation is also generated automatically and it's accessible from the SAP help portal. Um, you can navigate across the different modules of the SDKs to better understand the use of each activities uh, and have a detailed explanation of all the features that are available in our 2.0 version. Uh, so please don't forget to check out our 2.0 documentation. And finally, uh, our store now has 155 bots. Uh, so let me remind you that you have uh, public access at the location provided here. Uh, right, so uh, I hope you've got all the information about this new release and uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, you will find more information on uh, and demos in our uh, YouTube channel, as well as the blog posts. And now I will uh, leave the stage to Jérôme, if you can share your screen. Yes, sure. Let me know when you can see it. Yes, we can see it. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. So as said in the introduction of this presentation, I belong to the customer solution adoption team. And one of my area of work is to provide much 
materials for trainings, for example, and webinars, such as samples. Um, so in this very short demo, I will create an automation that uses Outlook and Excel um, to purchase some items, for example, in a web application. So, okay, so let's go to the bottom of it. Okay, so first, um, in this demo, we will need to retrieve uh, an email um, in a mailbox, right? And this email has an attached Excel file, so we need to download it. And then we will pass this table to get a list of all the items that we need to purchase. And last, we'll do some shopping. Okay, so just let me share the... Uh, application. Okay. So I will create a new project. So uh, demo shopping, for, for instance. And the first thing that I need to do is to capture the application that I need to pilot. Okay, so the application is opened in this other uh, navigator. Okay, so uh, you can browse the different categories, uh, select an item, for example, add it to the cart. So Let's go to the home page. Here it is. And I will capture this application. So I will create an application. The list of all applications available will be um, automatically displayed in this area of uh, the screen. And you just have to select it uh, in order to be able to um, define the name of the application, the name of the screen and also uh, to select, for example, the technology. Uh, it might be a web application, it might be a sub application, for example, or just ba basically uh, UI automation, uh, such as calculator. So let's call it the shopping carts, and I will call it P-Home. And just as is, uh, it will ca automatically capture the different parts of the page and then save it. So I can work with it in order to declare all the items I need to use um, in my automation. Uh, for example, the list of different categories, uh, I will define it as a collection. Um, this is the definition of different buttons uh, that I might need to use uh, during the execution and so on. So once the application is saved, so I will be able to work with it. So we can see that the framework is automatically detected. So in our case, it's a Cypress 5 application, right? And we also have uh, at this level for the application level, we have some criteria which are automatically set up in order for the agent to, uh, to be able to identify the application when running. Okay. And uh, here on the screen, uh, we also have some URLs. So I will modify the um, this criteria, and I will, for example, just tell that it needs to hands with a slash categories value, and then I apply it. If I want to select uh, and declare some different elements, what I can do, is, for example, is I will simply click on an item uh, on the screenshot of the page. Okay, uh, I can also uh, browse the DOM of the page in order to select uh, more specifically uh, the, um, the button element here. So I will call it uh, button cart. Okay. And I will and here it is. In the screen, uh, in the main screen, if I want to select this list of categories, I just need to select um, the main container, uh, the UL here, uh, the UL tag, and returning to the both uh, in order to to view the, the DOM of the page. I just have to select one item here. So, uh, for example, let's remove this one. I will select the parent element with an ID which is automatically uh, defined, and I will uh, give it a name. I declare it. So we can see that all of these items are red highlighted. It means that they are, um, the system is not able to uniquely identify them. And so I just need to make it as a collection in order to, to be able to pilot 
each one of them uh, later on. Then I will save my application. And once it is done, uh, I will be able to, to use it in, uh, in my automation. So it might take two, up to one or two minutes. The, the next step um, uh, we are, we are uh, focusing on, so um, I want to create a data type because I will um, use um, what we call items, uh, items to order uh, in our case. So let's create uh, one data type. And so, as Sophia presented it uh, a few minutes ago, we can create as many uh, attributes, as many fields that we that we want. In our case, I just want to use a name and a category. Okay, then it is automatically added there, and I will save it. Then uh, I will create an automation. So first, uh, because I'm using Outlook and Excel, I will make sure that uh, the dependencies are correctly uh, imported in my project. So I will select um, Outlook, Outlook package and add it. So it will automatically be downloaded from the, from the store and um, add it as a dependency in this, uh, in this project. Okay, perfect. Now let's create an automation. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, just want to make sure it is. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I will select um, the version of my agent and uh, retrieve items from mail. Oops, um, sorry. I just need to make sure that the agent. Uh, yeah, I see traditional on the correct tenants and the connection has been lost, of course. Uh, I would just restart my agent. Uh, just one minute, please. And I will refresh uh, this page. Okay, back to the project. I will reopen it in the list of all available projects uh, which we, uh, that we have. And it was called Demo Shopping. Okay. So let's create an automation. Okay, now. We can see that my agent is correctly recognized. So let's create this automation, retrieve items from mail. I will create it. Okay, so first thing to do, uh, if I open my Outlook uh, in, this, in this folder, so I will look in the demo folder uh, in my inbox uh, in order to retrieve this specific mail, uh, I mean the one with, uh, where the subject is demo um, dash shopping cart, and to download this Excel file, and then I will be able to work with it uh, in my automation. So first, I will uh, open the Outlook instance. Okay, I read it at the end of my automation, and I will search for a given uh, email. is where, um, okay, perfect. So I will define the different parameters I want to, to use in the filter, okay? So for example, in the folder uh, where the name was demo and in my uh, folder inbox, okay? And uh, the subject was equal to 
uh, and it was um, demo shopping cart. Okay, and I will save it. And then I will just need to iterate uh, of, of this activity in order to, me, to be able to work with uh, this element. So first I will um, insert a forever loop and in Outlook activities, I will just make sure that um, I am able to work with uh, um, what we call the current context I, um, email, uh, just to make sure that uh, there is no exception thrown in the automation. Oops. So if uh, no mail was found, then I will hand the loop and I will uh, reach the end of my automation. If uh, an email is found, then I will be able to, to perform any task I want in this branch, okay? So for example, uh, I just want to uh, save attachment here uh, and I will just provide the destination. So C slash dump, for example, and I provide the, um, the name of the file I need to download, XLS6. And here it is. And now at this point, um, this piece of option will automatically download uh, the file uh, from the email, okay? Uh, so we can assume that uh, we are able to retrieve um, the Excel file, okay? And then what we will do is work with this Excel file in order to provide um, a list of items we need to purchase to another automation, right? So I will open uh, the Excel instance. Okay, here it is. I will release it as a very hand. And I will use uh, this uh, activity, the Excel Cloud link. And when I want to edit it, okay. Uh, Sorry, where is it? Yep, it is this one. Uh, I will select the file uh, which is located on my desktop here for the demo. So the file is automatically detected uh, with a range definition. Okay, uh, I will need to set up the, um, the location of the file that will be used in the automation. So temp and dot pixel six then if um, I define uh, in this area the type of item I want to use uh, so item to order which is the data type I just created before and I just um, I just have to drag and drop here to to map the different information and at the end of this activity I will have a list of um, item to orders uh, elements and this list is named written values here, which uh, I will be able to work with it in another automation. Now, uh, very quickly, if I want to, so I will save it, and I want to use this list um, in my web application I just captured before, okay? So I will create another automation. So purchase items. I will define an in Put parameter, so it will be items to purchase. I will select the data type, item to order, and I, um, I declare it as a list, okay? And then um, I will be able to pilot uh, my, uh, my web application. So I will drag, uh, drag, for example, this screen, and I will be able to select the different elements on this list. So. Uh, for example, in the, um, I will get this element. So uh, the loop is automatically inserted because I'm working with a collection. Um, so you remember it, um, I selected the collection um, option for this element. Uh, otherwise, they, they were not uh, uniquely identified. Okay, And so uh, because it is defined as a collection, um, the system is able to automatically insert uh, for each loop. And so I will be able to work on each element of the, of the collection um, over, my, over, my, over my automation. Um, so I will get uh, the element. So here 
you can see that uh, there is a current, num current number here. So I will, for example, get uh, insert the get element just there, and I will use so the current number, uh, which is, uh, for example, there. Um, no, sorry, I want to insert a condition because I want to make sure that the category I'm working with uh, is the one of the item I want to purchase, okay? So for example, here, I will select a condition and using this edit expression pop-up, I will be able, uh, for example, the current number of the text, which is um, the value retrieved by the get element activities just before. I will just make sure that uh, the item to purchase uh, with the category, okay? Automatically uh, using the first element of this list. If it, um, so if this is the correct category, then I will, I will go back to the screen activities. I will click on the element. Say, okay, so I will click on the current member, which is the element I, um, I'm currently working on in this iteration of the loop. Okay, and then I will be able uh, at the end to end loop. Uh, and of course, there is a misclick. I'm sorry for that. So the click here at this uh, location, the current member, and the exit loop, which needs to be inserted just at this, um, at this location. And this, this is the very first part of the automation. And once I, uh, I click on the category, then I will be able to browse uh, again the list of different items, select the one I need, and click on the Add to Cart button, for example. So at the very end of the design part, we should have, uh, so this is project, which is the complete one, uh, because uh, for a time reason, uh, I created just before. So we can see that we have an uh, a first automation here when we search in Outlook in order to retrieve the mail. Okay, I will save um, the Excel file uh, on the hard drive. Okay, and then I will open the Excel instance uh, using the Excel Cloud Lake activity in order to create uh, my collection of items. And then I will call um, another automation with a list of items I need to purchase. And here it is uh, in this one. So for each item in the collection, I will purchase it. And then I will uh, proceed to the, to the payment and to what we call the checkout uh, in the automation. So there are many, many activities in that case because many fields that need to be filled. For example, the first name, the last name, uh, the address and so on. Okay, and if I go to the last uh, automation in this project, once it is loaded, so we we, we see that we we've got the main page. Okay, so uh, for each uh, so for each element, I will check if the category is the one corresponding to the item I want to purchase. Okay, if so, I click on it. Otherwise, I continue to iterate over this loop. Okay, and I will proceed to the same uh, for the list of items in a given category. And once it is done, I will be able to click on the hard to cut button, uh, which was defined um, in the application here, uh, which was captured. Uh, and then click on the button to proceed to the next element in my, uh, in my collection. Okay. So now if I just want to give you an overview of uh, the execution of um, this automation. So let's go back here and we can see that so go back to Outlook, I will start my agent. And uh, so the Excel file is automatically loaded. You can see that it is opening and automatically closed because uh, it is very uh, fast in order to read its content. And then we can see that uh, the agent is automatically piloting the web application in order to browse the different categories, select uh, the um, adequate items uh, in the list, add them to the cart, and then once all of them are added to the cart, so I, um, I believe that uh, in this sample I used there are only four or five items, so it should be very quick. So once all of them are added to the cart, then we will open it 
and we will proceed to the pay, to the payments um, and fill uh, the different fields uh, appearing on the screen. Okay, so here it is. So as you can see, it's very fast. And at the end, uh, we we, we will receive we will receive a, a confirmation mail uh, telling us that okay everything has been purchased. Thank you for your time and your attention. And now I will hand over to Shawi for the for the next demo um, of this community call. Thank you, Jérôme. So I will I will share my screen. Let me know if you can see it. I think we should be coming. Yes, we see it. Thank, Thank you. you. So I will I will show a small demo that is another use case of uh, automation that we will build using the, the new Cloud Studio. So it's a different use case. So basically here we are positioned at the situation of uh, uh, HR department that who need to um, basically send automatic emails to the to the to the candidates who apply for the for the jobs. So basically, uh, here we have a processes of uh, getting the, the candidate email for, for job application coming from the Excel, and then we generate um, the, the personalized notification email from from the template. So and uh, here we are we are doing the word processing because we have a kind of template um, email that's using Word, and uh, we need to generate then a, a, a personalized email uh, the document from here. So in this um, in this uh, in this use case, I'm using these two um, documents that I'm going to show you. So the first document is the Excel from the list of documents. You can imagine that uh, here um, I just have an example, and you will see that I only have three names. But in the real uh, scenario, you can imagine that uh, the the job application application can can extract a, a long list of uh, the emails, and also that you can. You can also have another automation that's uh, directly extracted from the web page. Um, but here, basically, it's the input of the name that I need to have. And on the other hand, here I have a, I have an email template. So this is a real email that's actually sent by SAP um, for the for the job applicant to notify that we have received their their resume and we are going to process their their their, their job apply. Um, here you can see that as a dear, uh, and here we have a placeholder that need to then be replaced by the by the real name of the person. Let's look at the automation. So as you already see from uh, from Jerome that um, uh, how we create a project and also the 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 and also how we add the steps and the automation. Here I'm not going to um, to again start from scratch a project. I, I will just show you how um, I already generated the project and how, how, how we did it. So first, let's look at the dependencies, um, because here in our situation, we are using three dependencies. So the core and Excel just for the basic, uh, the core just for the basic functionality. So even if you want to log or if you do some, do some uh, system uh, requirements uh, steps, uh, you need to have uh, the core dependency available. And here, I'm, I, as I'm processing the Excel files and also Word files, I also need to uh, edit these two dependencies here. Um, let's look at my automation. So here, in my situation, I only have two automations. The first one is, um, is a document generation. So if we look at it, what it does, it basically opens the Word documents. Uh, open the Word instance. So basically, it's correspond to if you are you know, in your machine and you just open the Word application, and then you open a doc Word document. So to simplify here, I just put the password document I, I'm going to do. And then you do a replace all from this placeholder that they're showing the document with, with a parameter that's already passed. Uh, if we actually we look at this parameter, this is the parameter, info parameter of my automation is a name. So this automation it takes the input and they use this input to replace the placeholder that is available in the in the document. To note that the replace all uh, activity for the for the world it you can also um, it also have a list of uh, search parameters like what when you are doing a search or replace in in a word document you can configure a set of things. So here I define a wrap just independently from where is my cursor in the document. 
it basically turn around if at the end of the document I still haven't fin finished um, searching for the for the text. And then we save us the document as a PDF file. And here I'm saving the same folder where I have my Word document. And then I close the document and also close the, the, the Word application. This is my first automation. And then this automation is, is then used in my second automation. And the, what it does, the second automation, so it's actually, it used Excel. So it opened Excel, it gets the value. I'm not going to show it more because you also see it with, uh, with Jerome, how it works. But basically for each line with, of, the, of the name, we are going to then generate document by passing the, the name as input. And the, at the end of that, uh, we are going to then the close the, the, the Excel and the close the Excel instance. So I'm sure I'm show you how this will run. Okay, so let's do the do just do the test and then run it. So as what you already see from the previous demo, this will then uh, open up the the, the debug um, panel that is on the on the left, and here it will start to open the Excel. So you you see here you open up the Excel now it gets the list of documents. It's going to do the the processing as I have defined in the automation. And then it will start the start to open the Word document. You can see it does the name changes, and then it save the PDF. It close it. It will going to do it three times because as my my automation who open the world who who do the save us is really embedded and uh, in the full loops from the, the the second automation. We are going to see this three times. Okay. And when everything is done, then it says that the test session is completed. Here we can see all the steps that has run. Okay, so actually, um, I think that is the one question that is asked on the Q&A. When you click on the steps, it, the, the, the cursor is put here, and you are also be able to see what's the input output parameter that is available in the section of test data. Um, okay, so if I go back to my to my folder where I have generated documents. So you can see that I have three names in my Excel and then now three PDF are generated. If we just opened one of it, uh, we are not open three of them. You can see that it's the same email, but here the, the, in, the, in, the, in the first line, you have the, the effective name that replaced the, the placeholder. So this is the demo. Uh, thank you. And now I will hand over to Maria who, who, will, who will show the, the rest of the, the, the session. Thank you, shall we? Let me start. If you can stop sharing your screen, please. Yeah. I think I already stopped. Um, oops, it's me so. Yeah. I mean, can do it on top, I think. Stop sharing. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Perfect. So let's get started. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayara, from the solution management team. And I'll give you now some updates on our marketing enablement and community activities. So let's just jump right into it. I'm oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so with the marketing social media updates first, thinking of our 26,000 followers on LinkedIn, all these RPA enthusiasts, um, and of a way to say thank you to all of you, we have prepared some activities on LinkedIn. First, we have a monthly, uh, we have monthly articles published by our head of intelligent RPA, Sebastian Schröter, uh, in which he writes about RPA trends, hyper automation, low code, no code, and of course, SAP intelligent RPA 2.0. We have also a very interesting show on the making. Uh, CXO Corner is going to be broadcasted on LinkedIn next, next year, in the beginning of next year, which will have six episodes uh, with in-depth discussions about RPA with customers, partners, and RPA experts. So stay tuned to our LinkedIn page. Follow us there if you don't follow us yet. And um, so you don't miss any um, new episode on the series jump to the next one for the TechEd update. So TechEd took place last year, uh, sorry, last week and included over 20 sessions on RPA. 10 of them were prepared by our team. 
uh, including hands-on workshops, sessions about the 2.0 release or around RPA in combination with other technologies, as well as a very interesting customer testimonial from Zulik Pharma. Besides those sessions, uh, there was a plenty of content created by colleagues from other teams like S4HANA, for example, talking about RPA in the context of their solutions. Um, our colleague Pierre has listed the highlights of this edition in his blog post, uh, SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0 SAP Tech at 2020 is a wrap. Um, you can check it out. There are all the links to the on-demand content and to the news guide summarizing the launch of SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0 and further enhancements made to the SAP business technology platform towards a democratization of automation. Also with this QR code, you can um, go directly to the links to the on-demand sessions. Now, further to the enablement updates, we have created um, a special YouTube playlist gathering all of our 2.0 related videos, including product videos and product demos. Also, we have added a series of videos called RPA for Dummies, which is, explains RPA in a fun way. Um, now the star of our enablement activities is the upcoming uh, open SAP course, which will start in February. There was already a question about it in the Q&A. So uh, the course is called Enter Next Level Bu Bot Building with SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0. And we'll have a duration of six weeks and we'll target specially citizen developers and business process experts. Um, the participants will be presented with the low-coded cloud studio and we'll learn how much simpler the routines to create and execute bots have become. Uh, this course requires some basic knowledge. So I've linked uh, two courses which you can take to prepare to this one. So SAP Intelligent RPA in a nutshell or Business Process Automation with S4HANA. You don't have to complete both courses. Um, the registration for the Open SAP course will start tomorrow. So you can keep an eye open to our topic page on SAP community and our social media channels for the official uh, announcement, all the details and the sign up link. Um, we'll also add the link to this presentation later on before we make it available for you. Um, now let's jump to our last set of updates on the community. So you see our community topic page is up to date with the latest 2.0 assets. Um, we have also added um, a brand, brand new subpage with the most frequently asked questions around the solution. Um, this page will be updated regularly. So um, as we perceive there are more and more questions, we're going to add it there. Um, there are great blog posts on the 2.0 blog series, which is also linked here. Uh, I've also linked the trial version post where you got all the information about the trial version of 2.0. Um, after today's call, the next community call uh, for our RPA is going to be uh, on December 17th, talk, talking about intelligent RPA and conversational AI and how to leverage them for dispute management. It's also linked here as well as our community, SAP community calls page. Uh, for next year, there are also some exciting activities on the planning. Um, with the blog post series of 2.0 tutorials uh, written by uh, RPA experts, also challenges for the community members, um, like the one that we had this year, maybe some of you participated, was very successful. Um, we're also planning the season two of our video series, RPA Talk. We will share the launch of the series in the blog, so keep an eye open for that. And We'll be very happy if some of you would like to participate. I have linked here the se season one, which is on YouTube. So you can take a look, watch or rewatch it. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of RPA content already out there um, and some more being prepared for you. So please go check it out, our platform, share with your networks, share with other RPA enthusiasts who are also excited with the arrival of SAP Intelligent RPA 2.0. And feel free to reach out, give us feedback if there's something you would like to see from us and we will do our best to make it happen. Um, you can see on the next slide our 
yeah, our um, contact. If you have any questions, I don't think we have, we are on top of the hour. That's so, right. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Mayara and all You're the welcome. other speakers. I mean, we are already over the time. But um, all the information you ask, uh, you, you shared here, I have also added in the chat. Um, so, for example, the upcoming community call on Thursday. And also, if there are any questions left open, I mean, we have answered a lot of questions during the call in written, more than 30. So, um, if there are anything, if, if there's anything left open from your side, please contact the team at rpa at sap.com. This is also here in the chat. So I can only thank you, Mayara, and all the others, Peter, Sophia, Jerome, Jaoui, for making this call possible. And um, yeah, I will post the recording as soon as possible, as well as the presentation. So everything will be there. Thanks very much and have a great day ahead. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye.